Today I'm going to show you how to make this super cute planter and this apothecary canister style jar and we're going to get started right now. On this channel I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor and if we haven't met yet my name is Lisa and this is our gray house. This is my inspo. It comes from Kirkland's. It's a woven basket planter. It shows 80 bucks, but it's, you know, the largest size, I think. And you know, stuff always goes on the sale there. So I had this planter from Dollar Tree and I had put markings to where I placed the basket on the bottom, made the markings where I thought they should go. And I drilled the holes with just, you know, my regular drill. And so then I went and put in the zip ties that I also got from Dollar Tree and I put the head of the zip tie inside the planter and you can see just the end sticking up. Then I try to figure out how to put this basket back on so it lines up with the lines that I made. I could not get it lined up. So I ended up having to go back into my workshop and drilling a couple more holes. But again, nobody's really gonna see it so it doesn't really matter too much. Then you're gonna secure the zip ties. You push the zip tie through and then you're gonna push it over one of the wires and then you're gonna push it back through. You kind of see what I'm doing here where I'm just like zip tying it down and the inside is where the zip tie stuff comes together. And so I, I tighten everything up and then I do go in and cut off the ends because you don't need the ends. But I wanted the zip tie stuff to be on the inside just in case it hung over anything. I didn't want anybody to see it on the bottom of the planter because the bottom of the planter is that little metal basket thing. Oh, by the way, I got that from Dollar Tree too. Oh, here's some nautical jute rope. And this is decorative nautical rope. So there is a difference. And as you can see here, I'm just trying to show you that there's a difference in kind of like the width of the rope and the texture. So just be aware if you're doing a project and you want it all to match, make sure that you're using the same size. That wire basket at the bottom there, I got also from Dollar Tree and I spray painted it black. Now they carry it in black, but anyway, whatever. It wasn't in black when I bought it. So I am hot gluing all the way around and this is literally all you're going to see of me hot gluing because number one, it's boring. And number two, my, my battery died. <laughs> this is how it turned out. Now I could have gone all the way to the top and a little bit on the inside because that would have matched the Kirkland's planter a little bit better, but I just tuck a little plant inside and y'all, I really, and I say this about my stuff a lot, but I really like how it turned out. <laughs> I just think it looks really cute. It was super easy to make. I mean, aside from the drilling the whole thing, but that really wasn't that big a deal. And it just, it just turned out so cute. And you could put, you could even put like live plants in it because the, the draining tray is still in the bottom of the planter, but um, I don't do well with live plants. So this is what I got. Now I'm going to show you again, their version versus my version. Their version was like 80 bucks. So yeah, 80 bucks for one, even on sale. That's, you know, mine was like less than four bucks to make. So not too bad at all. Wait, it was like, let's see. I had the planter. I had the little basket that goes in the bottom. I had the jute rope and I used, I think three things of the jute rope or at least two. So just say six items plus the zip ties, you know, just say six items total times $1.75 is math. So I'm going to have to use my calculator six times a dollar 25 is bam 750 so 750 for a super cute planner isn't too bad and i made it and i like it so there's that this video is a late submission but it is part of the third thursday thrift flip open invite which happens the third thursday of every single month and it's hosted by rustic chicks designs and she has a brand new etsy shop Etsy shop. So when you go to her channel, look for that link in her description box and check out her Etsy shop as well, because I think you'll like what she's making. And the co-host is none other than the Rusted Willow. And you need to check out her channel because not too long ago, she made over this um, dresser thing and it turned out gorgeous. I'm telling y'all gorgeous. So go check her out as well. And the guest host is MB Gray Designs and y'all. Again, I'm a big fan of hers. Go check out her channel. I'm gonna have a link to all of their channels in the description box below, as well as the playlist. All right, back at it. Here is the inspo for DIY number two. It's apothecary jar canister set of three, and it's 58 bucks. So you divide that by three, gives you about 20 bucks each, and it's from the antique farmhouse. So one of the reasons I have a bunch of holes on the bottom of the planter is because I used the planter as my little, like, I don't know what you would have called what I needed to use, but I drilled the hole for the lid while on 
on the bottom of the planter, but it's, it's fine. It all works out. So I have this jar or container of just odds and ends, bits and pieces. And I had some knobs from previous projects and I had some, there's beads in there. There's all kinds of stuff in there, but anyway, I did have some knobs. So I was trying to find just the right knob to kind of, you know, go with the look that I was going for. I was trying to do a dupe, but however, I also wanted it to look unique and, and kind of like my style. So I ended up, Oh, you know what? Y'all should say things like when you're tossing stuff, save the knobs, save the hinges, save things like that. You can use them for other projects. So I settled on this little knob it was actually a knob from something my dad made for me that goes in my entryway and I saved the knob off of it because I wanted to change it out for just a different knob. Anyway, long story, who cares? <laughs> so I am just cleaning off the lid and then because it's metal, I'm going to go ahead and give it just a little bit of a, a rough sand here. So that way when I go to spray paint it, then hopefully the spray paint will you know, adhere better. And I try to sand the knob a little bit, but it really wasn't, I don't know if my dad put a lacquer coating on it or not, but anyway, it wasn't really sticking very good. So I did have a screw. I had to find a screw because the, the knob that I had didn't have a screw. And then I had to get out my you know, dusty, trusty little toolkit there and get out of screwdriver so I could really make sure that that little knob was tight on there. Even though you don't take off the lid that way, you it screws on. I, I still wanted the knob on there because that's the look I was going for. And then this is my little spray paint thing. And I show you that I was going to do Serenity Blue. I don't do Serenity Blue. I didn't like how it was turning out. Plus I was running out of spray paint. So I went back and spray painted it See, in my little box here, I spray painted it with um, gray. It's still a rust -Elium, but it was a gray color. And that, that's really, this is it, y'all. I mean, this is not a hard DIY at all. So I'm taking some E6000. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with E6000 because once you squeeze that tube, it just keeps oozing out. Yes, I, word, I use the word oozing. It keeps oozing out. So I, I had tested it. I put the glass onto the pedestal and I thought it fit fine, but it doesn't really touch. And so when I was looking at it, I'm like, it's not really like connecting. So the, the E6000 is going to do nothing. So I had to go around the rim more and add some more glue. Now, here's another thing. That container that I'm using is, <laughs> I don't, we have a local farmer's market every single week and this guy spells, sells spaghetti sauce. I bought the spaghetti sauce and that's the jar. So keep the jars. I mean, it seems silly, but keep the jars, keep stuff like that because you never know what you can turn it into. And y'all, this turns out like really super cute. I'm, I'm going to make more. That's how much I liked it. So this is how it turned out. And again, I just, I love it. And you can fill it with all kinds of stuff. I'm going to show you, I'm well, I'm just showing you empty. Oh, here we go. I'm going to fill it with some soft peppermints. These are my mom's favorites. And, you know, it just makes like a super cute little display. You could even use this for like a hot chocolate bar or something like that, you know, like and make them different heights and put different knobs on them just to kind of give them their own unique look. And you can also use them as like storage in your bathroom. Like you could put Q-tips or cotton balls or something like that in it. You could put it in your craft room. Oops, lost a, lost a bead there. That's okay. Well, lost another one. <laughs> anyway, so you could fill it up with like beads or something or, you know, just all kinds of things. And it just looks so cute. I'm, I'm just, I'm telling you, I'm going to make more because I'm just in love with it. So theirs was, like I said, $60 for a set of three. Mine was, um, well, the, the pedestal was $1.25 at Dollar Tree and then hump was off something else and the spaghetti jar <laughs> container was the other thing. So I spent a dollar 25, you know, and it looks, it looks very, very similar. Now I could have distressed it like they did, but this is more my style. And I, again, I love how it turned out and see, these are my two projects together. That planter, I do like the green showing through. Part of me like wants to just go ahead and finish it out, but I, I actually kind of like that green peeking through and that little canister, apothecary canister jar thing. I just love it, y'all. I think it turned out so great and I had fun doing it. So thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate the company while I craft and create, and I hope this inspired you to try something on your own. And if you wanna follow me on social media, like here on YouTube or over on TikTok or Instagram or something like that, I do different content on all the platforms. 
well, not all the platforms, but I don't do, like I do dance trends on TikTok. So that's kind of fun. But anyway, if you want to follow me on social media, my handle is Our Gray House, but just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye.